right. All right. Well, we've been, you know, going through the uh, series called evangelism. Okay. How many of you are enjoying? Okay. Well, I do. Uh, week one, and it was about storytelling. You know, what is your story? What's your testimony? What God has done in your life? So if you don't know what that is, well, you've got to actually check your life. What is the uh, activity of the gospel in my life? What has it done for my life, right? And uh, last week, we also uh, looked at the, uh, the word about the examine the messenger. So when you want to share the word of God and make sure that your life is uh, 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 reflecting the light of God, which is the, um, the good word, which is the good word of uh, your behavior reflecting the, um, the light of God, okay? All right, well, today's the third week, and uh, the title is No History, okay? That's a bit of a play of word, you know? Um, his story, you know, the God's story. Um, how would you feel when you turn the TV on in the, whatever the channel, TV news, the reporter comes up on the uh, uh, television and, and start reporting things this way? Well, I'm not sure when, but uh, I think last week sometime, you know, there's a tornado. I'm not sure whether it was a storm, something hit some part of North Shore. We're not really sure whether it's a uh, Tor Bay or Albany, somewhere in the, uh, I think three or four houses, roofs been, you know, destroyed. Could be more. And, uh, and I think possibly somebody got hurt. I don't know whether it was a fatal or not. News reporter reporting things that way. How would you feel? as an audience, you know, watching TV and saying, has he actually done his work? He's not sure when. He's not sure where. What exactly happened? What's the damage? Sort of thing. Nothing is clear. You know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna trust that person's report. Okay? So if you have in mind in your heart, hey, I'm gonna tell the world, I'm gonna tell my friend and your I don't know, relatives, your family, you want to talk about Jesus, but you have no idea what this book is talking about. You don't have enough content to share. You don't know enough to talk about anything about God and Jesus, okay? So that's, that's, not, that's not really good, right? So you and I, we need to know. I'm not saying that you should memorize all of them. You know, I don't think I can, and I don't think anybody can memorize this thick book. But at least you got to know the, some of the key points of the Bible. Would you agree? If you want to talk about, okay? Because no matter what sort of uh, amazing experience you may have, if you don't share the Word of God, listen carefully, if you don't, share, if you don't mix with the written word of God with your experience and at the end of the day you're just telling a good story that may be true, may not be true there's no basis you, you know, you may have uh, these amazing dreams and you talk about, you know, God showed me this way and that way and so you gotta believe it's not gonna, it's not gonna really uh, 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 go well so we need to use the Word of God, this is the most excellent tool that God has given us to share the faith. Not just some of your dreams and not just your amazing uh, uh, testimonies and so on. That's great. But if it is detached from the Word of God, it does not have much of power. Are you with me? How do you know that whatever the experience, whatever the testimony that you think you have experienced has anything to do with the uh, uh, Almighty God. Is that the, 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 the linking point is the Word of God. 
if it is something really from the Lord and the uh, Spirit of the Lord will indicate, you know, uh, reveal things out of the Scripture. Are you with me? And how did I know that uh, for sure that uh, God, when God said, I'm going to give you a new name and your name shall be no longer in a, a desolate, your name shall be like a joy that the uh, husband rejoice over uh, his bride. You know, that's what I heard in my prayer when I was fasting, when I was younger. But how did I know it is really from the Lord? The moment when I actually read that part and I was blown away. It was actually written in the uh, book of Isaiah. So it's like, wow, wow. That was, that was really, this is the most uh, uh, clear, like a, a final authority that whatever the experience you may have and I may have, is it in the Bible? Is it any sort of uh, linkage between living God and myself and my uh, life? Okay, so you got to know what has happened all these years, you know? You will, you were born, you know, no one was born uh, like 100 years before. You know, we all just, uh, I don't know, it's just uh, 80 something, 70 something, you know, and uh, we don't really know what actually had uh, took place before then. And uh, many thousands of years ago, how do we know anything? But the amazing thing is this, this book called Bible contains all the detail, all the enough of detail that we need to know about God and what he has done in our history. So you got to know the history, but where do we begin when you share your faith? You know, where do we begin? Well, let's see some of the key themes in the Bible. And uh, first thing we can talk about creation, okay? You know, what is the common beliefs out there about the beginning of everything? Oh, well, they said, well, I don't know, no one has seen, but uh, somehow we calculate using our method that uh, there was complete nothingness and out of blue, some big bang took a place and uh, loud, I guess, loud noise and some things start popping out of that and it's expanding. And out of that, just uh, incomprehensive time and years and these things popping out and that's part of you and us and these monkeys and turtles and the, you know pigeons and everything just all out of all this thing why I don't know why there's no purpose it just happened that way so is it scientific when someone comes to you and said well can nothing produce something I mean absolute nothing can produce something no but that's what we believe from complete nothingness and suddenly something happened and it's expanding and as it expands and it creates all sorts of things, there's a no real purpose behind. It's just happening that way and uh, we just use the word Mother Earth or did nature take its own course? What is nature? Ancient people, they call it God because uh, they couldn't comprehend the idea Without the creator, how can anything to be created? Okay? So anyway, but in the Bible, uh, in the beginning, what was there? God was. The very nature of God is that the, he does not, he is not bound by any physical time and space. He is the eternal being. There's a no beginning and also there's no end, okay? So that's why in Old Testament Bible, one of the name of, uh, name of God is that the ancient one, the one who before the beginning of time, and Bible describe God as such. In the beginning, there's God, okay? There's a word, that word was with God. That word was God. And that word create everything for him and by him. There's a great portion of the Bible talks about the creation and creation of humanity, creation of this planet Earth, 
and all these uh, plants and the, um, the animals and so on. So if you talk to any non-believers who do not share the same beliefs, well, perhaps you need to talk about the uh, Creator God. And then also Bible talks about the fall of mankind, how, you know, this, all this mess and chaos and pain and suffering started in human experience. Bible indicate only one thing, it's the rebellion toward God, disobedience toward the Lord. So this is called sin. And um, did we invent the idea of sin or deceptions and all these things? No, there's a fallen angel called Lucifer, Satan, and he tempted us, okay? Oh, God does not love you. God does not uh, have the best of your interests, you know? So why don't you take the uh, forbidden fruit? And that's the story. And not only the story of, of uh, the Adam and Eve, but also it talks about the Cain and Abel and a bunch of other people, how they get it into how they stumble over sin, and same thing. Why do I need to know these stories that took place such as so many thousands of years ago? Is that the same pattern of thing is happening in your life? Do you see the pattern of how the sin, you know, crawl into our lives? Same way that the sin has tempted and made them fall in a way that uh, Adam and Eve and Cain and all these sinners in the Bible. So sometimes I learn a lot more from the incredible sinners in the Bible and how some people started so good and strong and later on how they messed up their life at the end because there's an erosion of their relationship with God. There's a you know, sleepiness. And they, how they just sort of uh, deceived one after another, and at the end, there were complete separation. So we, we look at those things, and also there's another uh, thing, you know, although it was just a short chapter, the whole idea of flood. What is the uh, significance of the uh, flood? The Bible actually used the word as a previous age. It was a different era, different, different environment. You know, people used to live up to nearly a thousand years. And then after the flood, and uh, we barely live up to 100-something. Okay, there's some significant and fundamental change took place. But why did it happen in the first place? Because, because it was the sin was so prevalent all over the face of the earth, and God, God of justice, and he had to uh, judge. He had to, you know, pass on his judgment. So... That's the significance, and which indicates that when the face of the earth, although now we barely live up to 100 years, you know, back then they live up to uh, like 900 easily and so on, but within the short period of human life, if we produce enough of evil, what's going to happen? There will be judgment again, just like the first world was judged. You know, anyway, well, and then what happened after flood, and there's a the, the uh, beginning of Israel. God had in mind that I'm going to start a, a, just a godly you know, uh, nation, the kingdom that acknowledged God as their Lord and King. You know, started from the uh, uh, person of faith, Abraham, and his obedience and so on. And uh, it, was, it was born. But was I Israel successful in terms of you know, governed by the Spirit of the Lord and the follow and obedient to the ways of God. You know, overall, no, not really. They were so failing to the point that God had to judge his own people, Israel, that they will be taken into exile, okay, for 70 years and so on. So throughout the, all the story of Israel, you know, which is the major portion of, no, uh, the uh, major portion of, uh, uh, Old Testament Bible, and it shows the nature of God. The difference is the difference between Israel and the before the flood of people is that the, 
God was so much more gracious and merciful toward Israel because God made a, a covenant relationship. You know, if you are obedient to me and I'll be gracious to you and I'll bless you and I'll prosper you, I'll make you stronger than other uh, foreign nations you know, around you and, uh, and so on and so forth. So these blessings and curses. But if you disobey me and if you uh, uh, detach, you know, go away from the ways of God, there's got to be the consequence. Just like Adam and Eve, their consequence of disobeying God was that they kicked out of Garden of Eden. Okay? And the uh, same thing was for Israel, and they did not stay in the uh, overall will of God. They have failed. So what hope there is for humanity? And there comes the promises of Messiah throughout the, you know, the uh, story of Israel. And, uh, and as uh, the son of David, David was the second king of uh, Israel, and he was recognized as the, the man at the God's own heart. Okay? So this uh, promise, there be a time and one of the descendants of David and he shall be the righteous ruler and eternal king over uh, not just Israel, over the whole world. You know, there are many places this promise of coming Messiah. And then what happened? That promised Messiah actually did come. And it's the first coming of Jesus, Jesus Christ. So there's a four books that are dedicated. The beginning of New Testament Bible, four books, you know, from the book of Matthew to all the way to the book of, the book of John. And it's the, uh, it deals with all the major teachings of Jesus and how he was born and how and the, what sort of things that he, uh, he taught and uh, miracles and so on, you know, his activity. So that's the, uh, uh, one of the key themes in the Bible. And then the, one of the highlight of the life of Jesus. You know, if, if there's a one person that you and I really get to know out of all these thousands and thousands of characters in the Bible, the one most important person is Jesus Christ. Okay, that's why there's a four books are dedicated to get to know him. But out of the life of Jesus, what is the pinnacle of his life? is the very last one week. And that's why, you know, Gospel of Mark just dedicated so many chapters about that one week. Okay? So, why is it so special? Because that was, that is fulfillment of his dying on the cross and uh, being resurrected on the third day and also ascension to heaven. So this death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is, the, uh, de which is dealing with the, uh, our issue of sin. Problem of sin is that the once we uh, walked away from the ways of God, which is, you know, uh, a sin, there's no payment that we can actually pay off what we have done wrong, and that is the problem of humanity. So that's been indicated in all this uh, thick book of Bible ever since the uh, story of fall. But then Jesus is the one who gave us that fullness of forgiveness of our sin. And then he uh, taken up to heaven and, uh, and he sent Holy Spirit. And uh, the people of God, just like you and I, they carry the message of Jesus and uh, they minister to one another. They preach the goodness of Jesus Christ. And the church began to move, starting from Jerusalem and all the way to the ends of the earth. And it is still moving. It is still the time of the Holy Spirit working with the message of gospel through the life of saints and believers, which is the uh, uh, church. And it is the still this time of church era, okay? The move of the Holy Spirit. You got to know what you believe. What are the bases what sort of foundation you are standing on? We are standing on all these stories that the Bible has been teaching and telling us, okay? And then is, there, is that there is everything? Or what happened 
uh, add to this. The right? Bible uh, makes it very clear that the, the, a few uh, more things that still yet to happen is the return of Christ. He did come first time when he came. He came in a form of little child, in a manger, you know. And, but the second time when he returned, he's not going to come as a little child. And he's going to come back with the riding horse, you know, white horse. And uh, he will come as a ruler and the judge of all mankind, okay? So, you know, uh, many books in New Testament Bible and especially book of Revelation that talks about the seven years of tribulations and how the, um, the end will happen. What are the signs and the uh, uh, things for the beginning of that time? And uh, there's a, a mention of this rapture uh, thing, you know, uh, 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 the people of God will not be the object of God's judgment. So we believe that we will be taken up, up on the air, that we will meet the Lord until these seven years of tribulation will be completed. And then when that is done, that we will come down together with the um, returning Christ. Okay? And then the very last theme of the Bible is that there is going to be the true judgment of God, that every people who have ever exist, every single one of them, they will stand before great white throne uh, uh, of God, and uh, these are the non-believers, and they will be judged according to their deeds, and uh, they will go into the eternal state of either heaven or hell. But for the believers, who believe in the uh, sacrifice of Jesus Christ and they form the personal relationship with Jesus I and mean, we will not receive the same judgment, but we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ to measure the, uh, the reward, okay? Based on what we have done on the earth, okay? So these are the 10 sort of uh, major themes that this thick book has. The question is, how much do you know about these major themes in the Bible? If you don't, I don't know how many years you've been coming to church. Because a Sunday, just the 30 minutes to uh, 45 minutes is not enough to teach you and give you all these lessons and so on. And you need to study for yourself, for your own good and to, for your accurate report of what God has done in human history that is written in the Word of God. Are you with me? So if you're not equipped well, no matter how much you pray and uh, you desire to share the Word of God, it will be difficult because you don't have much in your own heart. You don't have much in stored and you don't know where to begin. You know, it's like the only thing you know is that the thicker part is Old Testament and thinner part is New Testament. And uh, when someone asking, you know, interesting question, you know somewhere in the Bible, you don't know where to, where to find it. Or just, uh, you know, then while you're looking through your Bible, your friend already found some answer on Google. It's like, that's a bit embarrassing. Okay, well, I thought I'm supposed to tell you something. And, um, but you got to know what you actually believe. This is the tragedy. In Old Testament Bible, God actually convicts his uh, people. You know, you fail and you are failing because the lack of knowledge of God. Israel failed not because of the lack of food and lack of horses and the sword. They failed because lack of knowledge of God, which means a, a lack of interest of knowing God. Okay? If you want, if you have any desire to share the message of God to anyone outside of the faith, you got to know your content, okay? And, um, but then, of course, we cannot talk about these 10 major themes to uh, share the gospel message, okay? And there are some things that are much more important than other parts and other uh, things. And I'll say, and, uh, these are the, um, the word of Jesus from John chapter 16. 
And, uh, and what Jesus was saying is that, the, well, it's better for you for me to go away because the Spirit of the Lord, Holy Spirit, will come and he will do certain things. And these are the works of the Holy Spirit, okay? And, uh, and whatever the Holy Spirit, the third person of Trinity, whatever he's focusing on, he is focusing on those things because it is important. It is very important for your salvation. Would you agree? I think so. So there is the uh, activity of the Holy Spirit when he does come and he's going to have three major ministry on the hearts of people you know, who do not know God. Okay? So let's listen to what Jesus had to say in verse 8. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Three things that Holy Spirit will just uh, work on the uh, hearts of people. And the one is sin. Another one is righteousness. And the third one is judgment. Okay? So I think whatever the sense of sharing the message of gospel, and we got to actually deal with these three areas, okay? And, uh, and Jesus is kind enough to uh, explain what it means. In verse 9, of sin, when we talk about sin, the Holy Spirit will convict about because they do not believe in me. Okay, how can you share the gospel without touching on the message of sin? Is that possible? If there's anyone who presents the message of gospel, omitting the issue and the theme of sin, that gospel is not gospel at all. Why is that? Gospel, which means good news, is only good news to those who are aware that I am a sinner. Those who are aware that because I am a sinner, consequently, and I am uh, 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 I will receive the judgment of God, which is the eternal separation from living God. That's not good. That sounds bad. Yes, it is bad. It is only for those people who believe that they are sinner and there's a consequence of sin, then there's a good news. Why? Because Jesus, Son of God, He has paid the penalty of your sin for good. Amen. So you don't have to pay the price twice. His son, Jesus, has paid the price. That's why it's a good news. But it is good news only to those who acknowledge that they are sinners in the uh, eyes of holy God. So when you share the message of gospel, in often you will come across people, no, 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 I'm not a sinner. I've never been to jail. And I think I live better life than you do. You know, you will, you will come across people. Yeah, and and so you, somehow you just realize, that actually, he's right. <laughs> he, he lives more noble life than and I do. Oh, shame on me. What's, what's happening? You know what? This sin is not just about some uh, stealing or, or lying and, and that sort of thing. That the ultimate sin that any uh, of humanity can have is that... Uh, when there's a remedy of sin, Jesus Christ, you know, God has already given uh, uh, for the atonement of our sin, but the people who refuse to believe, even though there's a clear evidence, so many places of Jesus Christ of Nazareth was real, and it was a, 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 he really lived a holy life, and he died, and he was resurrected. His resurrection proves that he was uh, uh, truly of God. But anyway, whoever does not believe in Jesus, that is the core sin, okay? That deserves separation from God for eternity, okay? So that's uh, a thing. And it's difficult to convince them. And that's why we need the help of who? Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, he will convict our heart about this issue of unbelief of Jesus Christ. Okay? Is it sin not to believe in Jesus? Yes, it is sin. But it will be difficult for non-believers to accept that, oh, how come not believing Jesus is sin? 
That's where the activity of the, activity of the Holy Spirit, only the Holy Spirit can convict someone's heart of not believing in Jesus. And uh, verse 10, what about the righteousness? You see, these are the focuses of the Holy Spirit when it comes to our sharing of our uh, faith. Is that all righteousness, uh, which means a uh, salvation. Only the, the righteous one will live forever with God. But we know the uh, message of the Bible. Nobody is righteous in the eyes of God. But Jesus said uh, of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. What was he referring to that talks about his dead on the cross? And also he will be resurrected and he will go back to the Father. And that he talks about the resurrection and also ascension of himself. So let's, let's look at it. When Jesus died on the cross, okay? Spiritually speaking, for those who believe in Jesus, what happened to us? Jesus didn't just die alone. He took your sin and my sin, okay? Whoever believes in him, that we identify with him, that his death took my penalty of sin. Then how do we know that the, he actually paid the price of you and I sin and its consequences when there's a receipt which is the resurrection he paid in full so much so that he was resurrected because the righteous man cannot be dead Jesus Christ paid the price not because he's got his own sin but because of sin of yours and mine and he paid in full and he was resurrected and not only that he ascended upon to the um, uh, uh, heavenly realm he sat on the right hand side of God okay that whole story shows that the, your sins been paid in full you are no longer sinner in the eyes of God how many of you believe that do you believe that you are righteous man and woman in the sight of God not because of what you had done but because of what Christ has done only thing you and I did is that the, instead of refusing to believe in Jesus, we confess that Jesus is the Lord. And we confess that Jesus is the Lord of our lives. Amen? So, which is very difficult, unless the Holy Spirit opening their eyes. Because I was struggling, you know, even though I was attending church for seven years, and I was really struggling to believe that I am righteous before God. Although I didn't do anything much of wrong, you know, today's standard, I live really quite a good life. But still, I had an inherent sense of deep sense of condemnation and the guilt in my heart. And that when a, a, a lady who explained the message of gospel, it's not based on what you do. It is based on what Christ has done. And she explained on the, uh, on the ground and draw the line in Christ, and there is no condemnation. You know what happened? Uh, I'm sure, you know, in that seven years of attending church, and I'm sure of you, I have heard similar messages in, in so many times, but on that particular afternoon in the youth camp, and suddenly, I would say my eyes were open. I was able to believe that actual word. From that moment on, no more sense of guilt and condemnation in my heart. And I could actually, without wrestling so much, that I could actually believe that I am righteous in the sight of God because of what Christ has done. Amen? So that's the action of the Holy Spirit. How many of you actually convince that you are righteous before the Holy God? Well, I can think of so many wrong things I've done, even that point until now. But I can humbly, but firmly, I can confess that I am righteous in the sight of God. That righteousness is not my own. That righteousness is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen? So I, that's why uh, New Testament Bible, it used the word, we clothe Christ over us. So, you know, this is leather jacket, you know. 
I, Christ, when Jesus see me, he see, I mean, when God sees me, he sees my jacket. He sees you are clothed in my son Jesus and you are righteous. Amen? So that was the message. That's why it's a good news. Although inside there's an issue of sin and corruptions and the rebellion in me, but God has took it all upon his son Jesus and that I can get away with the faith in Jesus Christ, which is amazing. And uh, verse 11, and when it comes to judgment, because the ruler of this world is judge. Okay, who is the ruler of this world? Many places in the Bible and this, you know, the prince of air. Who is that? And he's Satan. He's the devil. He's the fallen angel, okay? And who took away one third of other angels and all these, you know, the, the cursed ones. And they are ruling, okay? And uh, where they the uh, power? They can only rule and reign wherever there is disobedience to God, wherever there is rebellion toward God, which we have fallen into. So the all mankind, and they are under the power of sin. You know, and whenever there's a sin, you got to know that there's a, somebody is taking control, that somebody is not God. Because God and sin, no common ground is the Satan. But that Satan is judged. When was he judged? When Jesus Christ, the innocent man, when he died on the cross, that was the time that Jesus, you know, disarmed the forces of darkness. And he paid in full when he was resurrected. And now the, um, the verdict has given and the, uh, the Satan and all his followers. You know, the hell, when you look at the Bible, hell is not meant for any mankind. Do you know that? Even Jesus said that this is the, 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 the eternal fire, that a hell fire is prepared for those fallen angels. But if there's uh, any of the mankind, anyone who would constantly follow the uh, prince of air and the uh, ruler of this world, you know what? They may follow all the way to the hell. So when we, uh, uh, when we, Distracted when we were distracted by this, you know, uh, uh, a Satan and all this sin and so on, and God made a way so that we don't have to join them. So anyway, ruler of this world is judged. However, when he, the Spirit of Truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will glorify me, uh, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. So when you preach the gospel, your main focus should be where? Of Jesus Christ, one person. So if you don't have time to explain from one cover to the other, starting from creation to judgment, at least you got to focus on the issue of sin and issue of salvation in Jesus Christ. It is all about who? One person, Jesus Christ. Who is the main hero of this book who is the main character it is son of god try a, a trinity god and the son of god jesus christ and uh, so if you are led by the holy spirit and the holy spirit will glorify me which means jesus okay is your preaching is your sharing is your witnessing glorifying jesus or just glorifying yourself Look at me, I'm so great. I've done this and I've done that and out of that great righteousness I did and God blessed me this way. Well, you can see that, but then you got to actually focus on glorifying in Jesus. You know, don't worry, I'm come to an end. This is the main content. If you don't have any of this, you know, just uh, time and, and an effort and so on, you know, uh, like when you are watching some of the war movies, what happened? All these young soldiers, they are fighting, and uh, I mean, there's a war still going on in between uh, Ukraine and Russia and so on. So when young man got, the, uh, got shot and bleeding and about to die, and there's a, you know, often you see these chaplains, they walk around, 
when they see the uh, this pandista beyond the point of uh, healing them and, and recover them and so on, and they're before their final breath is gone. And actually, one of my good friends is a U.S. chaplain, and he has seen many things like that. But in that moment of uh, a few minutes or even few seconds before their final breath gone out, you know, the chaplains, they explain quick message of gospel, hoping that they may even catch it, okay? Repent your sin. Accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. In the light of very death of Jesus Christ, what took a place? He was hung on the cross, and there's a right hand side of thief. You know, he was a murderer, and it was a awful kind of sinner. And uh, he admits that he is a sinner, but he asks for Jesus' mercy, and Jesus granted them. So, if you cannot think of any scripture out of this thick Bible to convince someone. You know, to deliver the message of goodness of Jesus Christ. Well, the most famous scripture in the Bible, John 3, 16, at least that much, you got to know. You got to be able to open up and show them and recite that John 3, 16 as the um, important message for them to know and believe. And which is, for God so loved the world, the motivation of everything, why there's so much of this and why this all this story, why bother God? It's because he loves you. Despite of your own sense of, you know, I'm not worthy. You know, I deserve more pain. I deserve this and that. You know what? That's all lie of the enemy. The God says God loves you. That's the message we want to deliver to the world before we condemn the world, before we judge the world. There's the main motivation of anything about church and the sharing of gospel is because God so loved the world that it was his motivation that he gave his only begotten son. What's his name? The main character, true hero of the Bible is Jesus Christ. Only begotten son. That whoever believes in him, that's the, the wideness of this you know, invitation. Anyone regardless of your gender and age and the nationality and culture, whatever you eat and whatever you wear, does not matter that whoever believes and accepts him should not perish. Why perish? This verse do not deal with the message of sin so much except this. Why anyone perish? It's the issue of sin. But you will not receive what you really deserve, which is, you know, uh, uh, being perished. But have instead everlasting life. Isn't that a good news? Yes, it is. It is truly good news to all fallen mankind. You don't have to perish because of what you have done wrong. In fact, we all of us have done wrong one point in time. But that is the reason that God loved us so much, he sent his son Jesus to die in your place of sin, in my place of sin, and he paid in full. What is the receipt? His resurrection. He proved, now you're innocent. Now you're righteous in my sight. Have faith in my son Jesus. Okay? Verse 17, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, uh, but that the word, world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, and he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the one, in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Who, what's his name? His name is Jesus. Okay? So we got to believe. And uh, you got to have this conviction in your heart. You know, look straight into your friend's eyes and share the message of gospel. You know, that Jesus Christ is the only way for mankind to be restored back to the Holy God. He did come to save you. Have faith in him and you shall be 
saved. Amen? Can you actually do that? You know, I'm looking at all this thick book, and then I talk about ten major themes, and then I go on down to the three things that the Holy Spirit works on about the sin and righteousness and judgment. But if you cannot do any of that, at least you share the message of goodness of Jesus Christ. God loves you. And that's why his son Jesus died. So whoever believes in him will not face the consequence of your sin, which is being separated from God for eternity. But instead you will have eternal life. Have faith in him. Amen? Do you know the story of the Bible? Do you know what's in it? Are you interested to know? How can you share the message of gospel when you, don't, when you are not interested in the uh, word of God? Amen? So why don't we just uh, dedicate this morning. Lord, even with the repentance, forgive me for not having to put enough time and effort to get to know the word of God. Okay? Because there are so much wealth of spiritual truth is hidden in this book. But it is up to you. How do you spend your day binge you watching all sorts of stuff, but not even giving a few minutes of the eternal word that has incredible value for your soul and actively bless your friends around. You know, let us just close our eyes. And uh, I want you to just stand up that when you sense that, uh, you know what, I need to spend more time. I need to sharpen my weapon. Your weapon, uh, your spiritual weapon is the, uh, knowing the word of God. Understand the word of God. And it is not only the food, but it is also the weapon. But if your weapon is dull, how can you make any impact against the kingdom of darkness? Okay? So I want you to just step up, uh, uh, stand up in your place and asking God, Lord, equip me. Give me more revelation. You pray for revelation. You pray that I will get to know God, but if you don't spend any time, you know, opening the Bible and meditate on the Word of God and try to understand and asking people around, what does that this mean? Pastor, help me out. I, I don't understand. Without that conviction, how can you convince anyone of anything of God? All right? Uh, let me just pray for you. Father God, we commend, we uh, 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 commit ourselves to you, Lord, that without knowing your word and without fully convinced in your word, Lord, we will not be effective witnesses in the world, Lord. And I pray that, Lord, and you will give us the overview and you will give us the more uh, uh, in-depth understanding of the matter that is in the Bible but most importantly, help us to get to know more and more, not only for ourselves, but for the sake of the world, that your son Jesus Christ and what he has done and also uh, what it means when he spoke all these different teachings. So, Lord, that we will be known as the people of Jesus Christ, and that's what it means to be a Christian, oh Lord. So we will, before we just, uh, 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 just uh, forever entertaining each other and entertaining our lives and help us to really seek to know our uh, uh, Messiah, Jesus Christ, so that we'll be able to witness about something that we know, not just mimicking the, uh, uh, some other people in the uh, name of evangelism, Lord. So we surrender ourselves to you, Lord, and thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.